Hello, this is Daryl at 10 Foot Truck. Good Attitude Services. Just dropped off two pallets, materials, and uh, the same company I've been doing for. And heading home. It's actually a really nice day today. First day it's been. I had to actually use the air conditioning a little bit on the truck here. Working pretty good actually. Get that thing going. It gets cold right off the bat. Happy about that. A little bit hazy, huh? It's not completely sunny, it's warm. I'm gonna roll the window down. And, uh, gonna be heading out. Fix someday it has a leak on it and hair you know, hair leaking. And uh, in the morning we started up, we get that smell coming off the exhaust right here. So I talked to the mechanic and he's um I think he said 500 bucks he can get it take care of. It's not too bad to do the exhaust to fix it. Busy coming this way. Both ways actually is fairly busy. Uh, it's probably the time from the air conditioning. Today is more like spring today than it was uh, the last last couple days. It was cold and rainy, and now it's. Uh, back to the warm. I think on the weekend we're going to be up to 70 and 70s. But that'll be nice. Hopefully I get some work on the weekend. Um, today after I get back I have to do like, I'm always like way behind with taxes. You know I kind of wait to the last minute. I've always been that way. Unfortunately so I got to dig through all the files and and uh, get all that taken care of. Next year, I'm going to, I'm not gonna do my taxes on my own anymore. Um, I'm gonna do a different system. I'm just gonna do the QuickBooks and then I'm going to have an accountant take care of it. And um, I just get tired of it. I don't like, I'm not, I don't know anything about, I, I just don't know how to do taxes very well, so I use TurboTax, but, um, getting to the point where it's getting confusing for me and I'd rather just have put everything on QuickBooks and then have them uh, just direct it to an accountant and they could, they're probably going to give me more write-offs and that stuff that I don't really know how to do. Uh, it's always better to me probably to have someone do it that knows what they're doing. Um, most of the years I've been doing self-employed, I've been doing uh, TurboTax. TurboTax is a good service. You can pay for the like extra or whatever. I've had I've paid extra one one year. I had someone help me on it. It's on uh, virtual whatever you call it. But um, I know a good accountant 
then it'll probably be better be better for me than just to have them take care of it and try to have to go online and do all this stuff. So I'm not uh, not not much for paperwork and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that'll be something I do later tonight. Cause it's getting annoying. Anyway, we're on the, the 11th, so it's um, getting close to the 15th deadline for the taxes. So, last week I didn't do a pallet run. They didn't have any, they had two this week. Last week I, was, I did some removals and uh, moving, or no, deliveries. Oh no, yeah, no, I did a... Um, in a labor, moving labor job, and then I did a removal, and then two, actually two removals, and then, and then one, uh, another moving labor job, so, this week it was, there hasn't been a lot, so, I'm happy that the pallet, the pallet load came in, the pallet, um, freight load came in, because they usually come in once a week, sometimes twice a week, but, uh, Last week uh, it was it was a no go, so missed out. But luckily, because I had those other jobs, and um, I was able to do that, the other jobs. But yeah, the weather's getting better, so I think business should be should be picking up soon for junk removal. And probably uh, moving, moving labor, deliveries, and that sort. I'm gonna open the window a little. It might be a little loud here. Get some air. The okay, thing is, the air conditioning here. This air conditioner is so cold, and I don't have the, the knob broke that we adjust the uh, air conditioning. I mean, you can turn it down through here, but it gets so loud. really good and the heater works really well I'm happy about that for uh, such an old car Removed. 
putting all kinds of wear and tear on it. Uh, I need to keep this truck as long as I can. It's made me money. It's a good truck. So I take care of it. Um, I want it to last a long time. Trucks are expensive. I was looking up. I've been looking in um, Facebook Marketplace, hoping that you know the prices of vehicles will go down, and so I could see if I could find a van or something. Then for the future, I'd like to have a cargo van. And but every time I look, everything's expensive. Like even if it's used, uh, prices are up still. A little bit down, they're coming down a little bit, just slightly, but not enough to put my money down, or well, I don't even have the money, but yeah, if I had the money, it would be, it's, it's a bit high. So, cars are still inflated. I know at some point they probably will be, become more reasonable because, uh, because there's so many cars on the market, um, flooded and not a lot of people can afford to get a loan and buy you know, get a new one so you have all those new trucks and vans sitting there and uh, so eventually they're going to have to reduce the price and when they do then they get those off the lots then I can see that ripple down the used cars and used trucks and all that you know so you got to wait on that before you get a decent price. That's over here. No one drives the speed limit anymore. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of rough roads out here because we get in the winter time we get we get snow and ice and that tears up the roads. And so like this time of year they haven't had a chance to fix all the roads like um, they will be spent on they spend all summer for all you know spring summer and fall fixing all the roads uh, you're starting to see the road road guys out there repairing already but um, this is the worst time because uh, the winter you know these a lot of these roads end up with chuck holes and, and they're, you know, cracks and stuff and um, so you get a lot of that going on a lot of bumps and it's hard on the, on the suspension so I try to take it real easy because uh, uh, I don't want to put too much uh, strain on the suspension, on the you know, on the ball joints, uh, tie rods, and that kind of thing. Because I've had to replace those, and I noticed being out here for the last few years, where uh, I'm coming up on four, or no, more than four years, I've had to repair, had to do repairs on the car, and you know, because of the uh, suspension getting so much wear and tear from all these really rough roads. So anywhere where it snows, you're going to get this kind of stuff until they fix it. And then it's going kind to of be nice in this fall and the roads will be nicer. These are really bumpy out here. You see where they, they do all the patching up right now. They're patching it up. So I take it a little bit slower just to I don't put so much strain on the, on the, on the suspension. Cities or other towns, but 
these roads are notorious for being made real rough. One of the chuck holes I hit up here, I thought the truck was going to split in half. <laughs> it was so big. It was like a crater on the moon. I mean, it was so big. I didn't see it coming either. I just I was driving, and it was too late. By the time I hit that chuck hole, the truck, the box felt like it was going to fly on. And um, so uh, I checked, uh, made sure I did some look. I looked at the suspension, all that to see to see what was. Going. People don't know how to purge. I tell you that. They just come flying out like like they think you're going to stop in the middle of the road on the middle of the freeway. It doesn't work that way. Another thing about this area is that they they do these um, entrances into the freeway here. They're really short, so they don't give they don't give the person enough time to react. You got to either blast in. You got to be looking way back just to see. And when you're coming up, you have to be real careful. To, you know, make sure pay attention because it could be just just not enough time to where the the end of the lane happens and you're right there. So um, I don't like that, but that's the way it is. Not all of them are like that, but the ones that are, I try to get over. But then there's people. Another thing I don't like about when I drive, I drive, I give distance to the person in front of me. I don't care how slow, fast, or whatever, unless it's just stopped. Because anytime people are coming in on these entrances like that, I could go right over, I could move over if there was room, and then they could come in. But there's never room because everybody's right bumper to bumper. But if people just spread out and let gave room to each other, you could move in between the lanes and it would be much more efficient. But people don't think that way. They, they just, yeah, for some reason, they gotta be driving right up on the bumper of every car, no matter how fast or how slow what the traffic looks like, they're jammed up against each other. There's no reason for that at all. I mean, it's like, you're just causing issues when doing that. You know, give some space between each car. The only time um, you get close to the car in front of you is when everything is slowed down to it. Like, you know, just everything stops. But when you're, like, I'm like a bus distance between the car in front of me right now, and I'm, I'm not gonna go any closer. I don't see any point in it on the speed limit right now. I can stay behind them. I don't need to be up on their bumper. But for what reason? How's that going to get me anywhere faster? It just causes issues when people are trying to get in and merge in. They, they can't because they're everyone's jammed up. And I don't know. It's just the way I, this is the way I feel. But everyone can drive the way they want to drive. I just stay. I give them distance so I can react if I need to. need to be, uh, there's no hurry. This road right here is smooth. They did, did, they did a really excellent job right here on this part of the uh, freeway. From here all the way to the border, the next state, this is a really good road. Or a part, this is a good portion of the, um, the 90 freeway. And I'm not exactly sure why they put more money into this part of the this part of the town or this part of the freeway in this town. Uh, but they did a good job. Whereas you go a mile back and your car's yeah, you know, it's just it's just a mess. It's just it's, a, it's rough. And I always wonder about that. You know, I always wonder like they put tax money, gas tax, whatever road tax. Some places get fixed and they're really nice. And other places they have the same tax and all that and they're just torn up. So like, what are they putting the money into? Why don't they care about the roads? Um, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. And so it's like each city or each county, or the, well it's the same county, it's just in a different city. So I'm confused on that. It's like be in the same county, but you go into a different city on the same freeway, and that in that city the freeway is smooth and nice, and then you go into the other city in the same county, and that freeway is torn up. So there's no difference in the weather patterns. 
not really much difference. It's just it's, they put more effort into road work because I know they did a lot of road work on this section. And look at they're doing it right now. Um, and they do it all the time, so they make sure that it's smooth. So you get a better experience when you're driving on this section of the freeway as opposed to you just go to the next city and, and just, your car feels like it's going to fall apart. I don't get it. I mean, if anyone out there can tell me why that happens, why the same county, the same road going through the same county is different in quality, quality in a different city. But the same county, I mean, I don't know if the city, it has to do with city tax. I just don't know enough about that to really make a comment on it other than it's an observation observation I've made over the years driving on this same freeway going into a different city and like like now it's a little bit rough here getting on the exit but it's still on that main part it's just pretty smooth and it's always been like that um but they're always repairing it so why don't they repair it with it maybe it's, it's busier over there or it's maybe it's harder to I don't know it could be harder to uh, get their, their teams out there and maybe it's, maybe it's just more traffic and it's just more hard it's harder to, to manage I don't know but that's just something I've noticed and also the roads like the, the roads not only the freeways but the roads in this city uh, and the valley are seem to be much taken care of more regular or more there's like the maintenance schedule is more often because they don't have as much as many chuck holes so I don't know don't know the answer to that I just know it's different yeah that's the way it goes right it's like that everywhere I think I think the worst roads I ever drove um, that I can remember were uh, back east when I was driving. Um, it is pretty rough right here, too. They have to fix this. But back east when I drove tractor trailer uh, back in the east coast, uh, I did a lot of work out there. I think it was Pennsylvania, or maybe it was, yeah, it was around there. I can't remember exactly. It's so long ago. Yeah, man, those roads were so rough. I know they have a lot of snow and stuff out there, but it was rough. It was like driving on, on a dirt road sometimes. And then when I drove, when you drive like, I remember driving to California, the roads don't have as many chuck holes, but they do, some areas where it's, you get a lot of sun on them, they, they do crack. Um, and so you have a lot of these cracks. <clears throat> Gas is 417 for unleaded. And it's, oh, I can't see a diesel. It kind of fluctuates. I thought it was more yesterday. But it's getting up there. I mean, the summer, it seems like, I mean, maybe they're going to jack the prices up this summer, I'm not sure. I have to adjust my prices when that happens. Yeah, when the gas goes up, the prices go up a little bit too. This is the way it works. If you want to stay in business, you gotta, gotta price Accordingly, like today, I got a call for uh, removal, and um, I priced it a little bit higher than I would price, you know, last summer or last spring. I was giving people deals for like one item last spring for eighty bucks, and now I'm, I'm up to one twenty-five uh, for a, for an item because prices have gone up. Everything's inflated. That's a bunch of lumber on the road here. Everything's inflated. 
So you have to adjust your prices. You can't just keep them low like that, or you'll just get you'll just mess with something. It'll be a, there's a problem for you because you have to all the prices of everything going up. And uh, that's kind of how it works. Same with the, uh, the transfer station. The transfer station has gone up. Uh, not a huge amount, but it's gone up a little bit. Well, that's, I mean, I guess it is. It went up for like 114 to a ton to 120, I think. I have to look. Maybe more. So that's gone up. The gas has gone up. <clears throat> Food has gone up. It's not over there. Yeah, so things, I just, everything has to go. I don't want to, I'm not going to get ridiculous with my prices. I, I try to be reasonable because I don't have a ton of overhead like, like some companies do. So I do keep it as lower. I mean, I think 125 actually for one item is really fair when it comes to a furniture item. I think it's a fair price. I was giving them discounts if they were really close, close in the area. I was going at 80, and uh, that's, you know that when you're paying 20 dollar minimum at the dump, and then you got to pay your gas, and if I need a helper, which I don't usually, um, you know you got to put put all that into consideration. So I think 125 is actually a fair price. That's just my opinion, but I'm sure some people are a little bit higher than that. Anyone out there has their, you know, I don't know. A lot of people don't discuss their prices, but. That's just the thing. Like that. So. How you doing? Nice day today. Isn't it? Yeah, finally warmed up enough. <laughs> Have a good day. I mean, I always take a picture of the mileage so I know how many miles I'm done. I know this is pretty much the same miles every time I do that job. It's the same place. So I don't really have to track it all that much. But anyway, I think I'm ready to shut this off. i got to clean up the back of the truck, get it ready for the next job. Hope everything's going great. This is Daryl, the 10-foot truck at Attitude Services.